What is going on ladies and gentlemen, AJ Good here at the House of Masks where we unbox and review cool shit almost every single day and you guys already know what the deal is. Definitive Slipknot mask history where I'm setting out to catalog every single Slipknot mask worn by every single Slipknot member. We've done Sid, we've done Joey and that means that today is Paul. Paul, number two, and I play bass. Yes, the late, great Paul Gray. We're going to be taking a look at every single mask he wore between Mate Feed Kill Repeat and his last album, All Hope Is Gone. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into it. We are starting with MFKR. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and start off with this weird oddball paw mask and the only reason I'm including it on this list is because I know that if I don't mention it, I'm going to have a bunch of fucking fans out there that are like, eh, you missed this weird oddball he wore during MFKR. So I went ahead and mentioned it here. I'm not adding it to the list. I did just want to mention it as to not have a million comments that said the same thing. I would highly consider this mask to be an oddball, but it is what it is. This is the only Paul Pig mask we saw that wasn't the Gerard Enterprise his two-piece pig mask. So he only wore this for one show, and I believe it was only for one song in the MFKR era. There is footage of it out there, but the audio is absolute garbage, and clearly you can tell that the footage itself isn't that great. It was mid-90s camcorder footage, so it is what it is. But I did just want to mention that. Now we will hop into the actual mask list. All right, so first up, it looks like we've got the regular Gerard Enterprises two-part pig mask. As you can see here, he is just wearing it with the regular strapping, but it does look like he's attached some electric tape to the edges here maybe to help secure the thin straps that come on these masks typically, or maybe just for an aesthetic purpose. No one really knows, but this was mainly how the mask was seen during Mate Feed Kill Repeat. As you can see in this photo and the next photo I'm about to show you, Paul does have the Merit keychain through the pig mask nose. Next up, we have the same mask in the same condition minus the bottom jaw. The way that these masks come stock is actually in two pieces and they have two separate straps, so you can wear it with or without the jaw pretty easily. And I'm not sure if Paul's maybe fell apart during a set and this is what he was left with or if he took it off for some other reason but there are a couple shots floating around of him wearing this mask without the lower half and you'll notice as I mentioned earlier he still has the Merit padlock keychain in the snout now I do have one other photo that I want to sneak in here and I'm assuming this is when Paul removed the tape from his mask. As you can see they finally have jumpsuits here but this was pre-self-titled. The mask was actually not re-strapped yet but you can see that he has the lower jaw attached. The upper mask is clearly intact but there is no electric tape running down the side. There does seem to be a little piece of electric tape in the middle of the mask. Once again I'm not sure why but it does appear that he has removed most of the electrical tape from the side. And before we move on to the self-titled era, I'd like to go ahead and note that yes, I know that Paul wore different headgear during the Mate Feed Kill Repeat days. Sometimes it would be a backwards hat, other times he would have his hood up, other times he would have neither. But as I've mentioned in the previous two videos, I don't count headgear unless they actually change the mask. If there isn't an actual physical change to the mask, there's a good chance that I'm not going to be counting that type of thing on here. So it is noted, but it is not part of the list. These do not count as different masks or different variations of the same mask. Well, that was quick, and I have a feeling that the rest of the cycles are going to go by pretty quick as well. So let's keep this train rolling. We're moving right on into the self-titled era. Alright, so first up we've got the Gerard Enterprises two-part pig mask. And as you can see, this is pretty much the earliest of the self-titled looks. The mask is still pretty clean. Clearly it's been restrapped with some heavier duty leather strapping, and Paul still has the Merit padlock keychain in the nose. Next up we've got a weird variant here because this one actually doesn't have any straps on the bottom. You can briefly see this in the Welcome to Our Neighborhood DVD, and I'm assuming that this was in between Paul having the bottom of his mask restrapped. Maybe with the first strapping job he wasn't really happy with how it fit and after a couple performances he realized that he was going to have to have it changed so while that was in order he went ahead and played a show or two without the bottom straps intact. Next up we've got the mid self-titled pig mask and as you can see it's got its bottom straps back and it seems to have some stitching attached around the cheek area where the bottom jaw and the actual mask itself meet. Again I'm not sure why these were necessary but it definitely gave the mask a unique look which brings us to our late self-titled pig mask and this is my favorite version of the mask it's just been 
absolutely destroyed. The wear and tear on this is so beautiful to me for some reason. Between how dark the mask has gotten, the rust on all of the metal work, and this weird white substance that seems to be showing up on the straps, the mask was absolutely haggard and just something really, really cool to see. And finally, we have the last version of the self-titled mask on this list. This is a pick that I found not too long ago, and it appears that Paul just wanted a little bit of backup stability with his strapping job or his straps completely gave up because he's wrapped black duct tape around the top strap of the mask. Again, a very cool version, and I'm sure that most people don't know about this variant. What did I tell you? We're cruising on by. But now we're actually getting into the album cycles where the band was able to have masks made for them, meaning multiple copies. Clearly Paul has been using the same mask from MFKR all the way through self-titled, but during Iowa there were multiple copies with multiple finishes. So how many were there? Let's go ahead and find out. Yeah! All right, so we're gonna start off with Paul's Iowa promo mask, and this was about as basic as it got. This was just a plain black mask with a couple little wrinkles here and there, and there's not really a whole lot to say about this mask. Clearly, this mask was sculpted for Paul, and it was less of a pig and more of a Hannibal Lecter style mask. I personally prefer the all pig mask, but I think it probably would have been kind of cringy to see an actual pig mask sculpted for the band, so I'm kind of glad that we went this route. It definitely fit Paul and his persona, and this would be the mask style that we would follow for the rest of Paul's career. Next up, we have the grill mouth variant. I think this was seldom seen and only used for a couple things. Most notably, this photo shoot. This was still very, very early Iowa. In fact, I don't think the album had actually released yet, and we saw some weird variations from certain members. This photo shoot was the only time that we saw Sid Wilson wear his C3 again for the Iowa era. I definitely dig this variant of Paul's Iowa mask, and I wish that we would have seen it more often. Here we've got a weird face painted version. There seems to be some different strap patterns going on here. Clearly there is cuts in the mouth and obviously we call it the face paint version because it has a weird amount of white face paint smeared on it. I believe this to be the version that Paul wore most during the Iowa cycle and Paul would play around with and change the face paint designs on this mask throughout the Iowa cycle. Next up we have another cut mouth version. Obviously this one does not have any face paint on it although it does have some slight wear and tear on the chin area. You can see the raw latex coming through the paint there. Again two slits in the mouth similar to the last version. This one only has one overhead strap, which I find very interesting. I'm really into symmetry, so having one overhead strap really stands out to me, and I am not a fan of that. Next up, we have the face paint version again. Clearly, the face paint designs have changed. Paul has added an inverted cross on the forehead. There's some other wear and tear on the mask, and then most notably, again, because of my OCD, I noticed this, we have a different miscolored strap that goes over the left side of the mask. Bringing us to another stage in this mask's life, we have, again, change the face paint here. There are probably more photos of this face paint changing over time that I could even list, but this is just another example. Next up, we have the face paint variant again. This one is almost completely whited out. Definitely a ghastly look, something I'm definitely into. I very much dig the way that this looks. I wish that we would have seen it more. And once again, Paul seems to be having problems with his straps because there is black tape over the straps yet again. Or maybe this is just some sort of weird ritual that Paul would go through towards the end of an album cycle, but probably not. And last on the list, we have the Freddy vs. Jason premiere version. This is, once again, just the face paint variant with even more wear and tear. Clearly the mask is starting to break down. The straps are having all sorts of problems. You can see wrinkles on not only the leather straps, but the mask itself, and most of the face paint has worn off, giving us, for the most part, a gray tone throughout the entire mask. With only two albums left to go, we jump on into the Volume 3 era. All right, so first up on our list is going to actually be an Iowa mask that wasn't worn until the Volume 3 era. Since this mask was worn for a Volume 3 interview, it does count as a Volume 3 mask, although it is an Iowa sculpt. Here we have the Iowa grill mouth, and aside for the fact that you can clearly see new face paint splotches added all over the mask, the over-the-head strapping has been removed. Once again, it was a toss-up whether or not to include this on the Iowa list, but since it was for a Volume 3 interview, I am counting this mask as an early Volume 3 mask. Next up, we have the first true Volume 3 mask. All of these masks were pretty much the same aside for the paint finishes on them. They all had the same, if not a very similar strapping pattern. We have one over the head leather strap that goes over the top, two elastic straps on both sides, the top and the bottom that connect to an O-ring on the back, 
and then an elastic strap underneath the chin. As you can see here, this one has a pretty basic paint job. Some of the other paint jobs were slightly more intricate than this. Here we have the next variation. As you can see, this one is pretty clearly beaten up. There is a lot of weathering going on on the face, giving the mask a very blurred and very raw look. You can see a lot of the raw latex peeking through, especially around the mouth area. Here we have a pretty fresh volume three, and as you can see, this one has almost a cosmic look with the paint job that's done around the eyes. And as you can see, the cracks on this mask are all filled in white. They stand out very, very nice against the shiny black backdrop. This is probably my favorite version of the Volume 3 mask. Here we have another Volume 3 variant that looks like it wasn't ever painted. It was just cast in solid black and was just strapped and sent out the way that it was. Maybe this mask was painted at some point and it just got heavily, heavily weathered. The reason that I can't tell is because it doesn't look like there was much to the mask if it was painted. But then again, as you'll notice on the top, strap there it does appear that those rivets have been rusted so maybe it was just a heavily used very weathered mask next up we have another black and white variant this one doesn't seem nearly as detailed or contrasted as the black and white variant that we saw before next up we have another black and white variant and it does appear that there are a few other colors that are going on in this mask I don't know how well you guys can see it but it almost seems like there is some extremely dark navy blue going on and maybe even some red chipping this one is a very very strange color Copy. And last but not least for the Volume 3 Paul list, we have the Death Mask. What can be said about this that I haven't already said about the death masks? These are very, very creepy, and definitely the biggest drastic change to any of the Slipknot masks on this list so far. Slipknot went from very much having their own identities in the band with their masks, to now having a full set of matching death masks. Alright guys, so we have made it to the very last album cycle to feature Paul Gray, who unfortunately did pass away during the All Hope Is Gone cycle. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last masks that Paul Gray wore with his time in Slipknot. Alright guys, so here we are on the final album of the list, All Hope Is Gone, and we are starting, of course, with the All Hope Is Gone promo Purgatory Masks. These giant paper mache masks that were made of each member's face, just kind of a weird artsy fartsy thing. These masks were later destroyed in the psychosocial video, although it seems like at least some of them did survive enough to be in the Knotfest Museum. And yeah, I think these were probably the most different thing that Slipknot had done mask wise up until this point. In volume three, we got the death masks, and on All Hope Is Gone, we got these big weird purgatory potatoes. All right, so next up we have the All Hope Is Gone promo mask, and this is pretty much the base mask for this album. As you can see, it is very, very similar, at least sculpt and paint-wise, to the Volume 3 mask. We've stayed true to the strapping pattern, and we've also stayed true to the mouth, keeping the nail theme, but we seem to have taken away the cracks that were in the forehead and replaced them with cracks all over the mask, a lot less cracks, might I add, along with certain areas that have been stitched back together. Paint-wise, as I said, it is very similar to the Volume 3 mask. As you can see, for the most part, we just have a black mask with some white paint smeared on top. Here we have the debut mask, almost identical to the last one. I believe that the only difference is going to be the paint job. And again, slightly different paint job. Here we start to get to a point where the paint jobs almost have like an argyle feel. Certain shapes have been made between the cracks on the masks that are colored and different than the other areas. We've kind of taken away from the vertical smears that were kind of paralleled with the eyes, and now we just have different areas of the mask filled in. This next mask that was seen at the Knotfest Museum seems to combine both of the paint job ideas that I just explained. Not only do we have the white smears of face paint going up and down on the mask, but we also have the argyle feel of the different shapes being filled in different colors. Here we go back to the white smears running parallel with the eyes. These ones seem to be a lot cleaner though. Again, we have another variant featuring the white face paint smears. These ones seem to be a lot more saturated and a lot brighter than the other variants. And here we have what I would call the most argyle out of all of them. This one clearly has a rustic style paint job, but you can clearly see the different shapes are filled in with different colors here. I would say that this is probably my favorite All Hope Is Gone look. And last but not least, we have the death mask yet again. I'm not sure if this is the exact same death mask from volume three or if the band had new made by this point, but he did wear this during a Vermilion performance at Download Fest 2009. Unfortunately, Paul Gray passed away during the All Hope Is Gone cycle, so this will conclude Paul Gray's mask list. 
Alright guys, so unfortunately that does conclude Paul Gray's definitive Slipknot mask history list. And you guys know what time it is now. Go ahead and let me know what your all-time favorite Paul Gray mask is. Make sure to drop it in the chat, drop it in the comments. However you're watching this, just make sure to let me know. I said it earlier, my favorite is obviously the late self-titled pig. I feel like that is prime Paul Gray, and when I think of Paul Gray, I think of the pig mask. So this is going to conclude this video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Thank you guys for making this series such a success. I definitely appreciate it, and I want to give a huge thanks to my buddies Nico, Anthony, and Tom, who have helped with every single video so far. I very much appreciate it, you guys, and if you would like a further in-depth look at this list, make sure to head over to slipknothistory.com. I've been pulling lots of photos from that website for these videos, and there is tons of other information on everything that I've covered and more there. So until next time, this has been AJ Good at the House of Masks telling you to say no to drugs and alcohol, and we'll see you guys later. Mask on, 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 mask on